Developing tonight as the campaign battle between Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton continues to dominate the daily news cycle, President Obama finds himself enjoying his highest approval ratings in years. That's despite a growing list of issues facing some of his administration's most significant policies. First, his signature law, Obamacare, seeing premiums rising sharply and some of the country's biggest insurers threatening to back out. Plus, a shocking new report suggesting his administration gave secret exemptions to the nuclear deal with Iran. And today's disappointing jobs reports, with just 151,000 jobs added, down 45% from last month, coming on the heels of a sluggish GDP report. All this begging the question, should Donald Trump be doing more to portray Hillary Clinton as nothing more than a third Obama term? Joining me now, syndicated columnist and Fox News contributor, Charles Krauthammer. Great to see you tonight, doctor. Good to be here. Okay, so, you know, obviously this is always something that you can use in the campaign. Uh, the fact that your opponent tying them to the current administration, if they're, if they're from the same party, but she was actually part of the administration. Is Trump missing a golden opportunity here? Well, I'm not sure how golden it is. And the reason is that Obama's own numbers are quite high for someone in the eighth year of his uh, term. It's over 50 percent, which is pretty unusual. And I think one of the reasons is that he's out of sight. Now, just take, for example, health care, which, of course, extremely unpopular, always has been. Well, in the years when he was delivering 37, 38, we lost the track of how many speeches, national addresses on the subject. He was completely associated with it. Well, he hasn't spoken about it for years. In fact, he hasn't sort of been seen for about six months or so, because as you said, the scene, the, the media coverage, has all been about the campaign. It's as if the country's been run on autopilot. So the blame attached to the policies is far less than it would be otherwise. Now, this is generally true at the end of, a, of two terms, but this is all the more true because it's been an unusually let's say, unusual campaign with a lot of entertainment value. And Obama has sort of faded. So as he fades, his numbers go up out of sight, out of mind. It doesn't pay as much to go after him. You want to go after her, and that's been Trump's strategy. Well, and when you think about the fact that she was a member of his team as Secretary of State, and she has been critical of some things that have turned into foreign policy sort of disaster, saying she would have handled them differently. Um, but it seems like Trump has done some connecting her to, you know, obviously the Russian reset, which didn't go quite as smoothly as planned, right. problems in the Middle East. I mean, does he need to focus on her as an extension of the foreign policy from this administration? I think the things he's missing is, look, the biggest disaster of the last eight years in terms of foreign policy was the complete withdrawal from Iraq in 2011, clearly as a way for Obama to clear the way for his reelection campaign. That was a political decision. It was not a strategic decision. And she was in on it. She was Secretary of State. Now, she can say, I gave her different advice in private, but that won't wash. I think that is something where you can tie her to him. Instead, what they did is when we got the news about the ransom that was given, flown, the cash flown into Iran in return for the hostages, they tried to tie her to to that, but that occurred after she left office. Mm -hmm. Any connection between her and that was extremely tenuous. I thought that was a missed opportunity. That was not a credible uh, connection, even though she had initiated negotiations on the nuclear deal years ago. She was not involved in the ransom payment, but I think there are issues, clearly the one about the debacle in Iraq and in Syria as a result of the precipitous withdrawal was something that I think he ought to push on very hard. Uh, and by the way, as you know, Dr. Krauthammer, they're not calling it the R word. They're not calling it a ransom. Of course. Uh, but, but people we, may want to define it that way, but the State Department and this administration continues to say, not a ransom. But you and I are speaking the truth here, so we do say the word ransom. I'm going to get out my dictionary. But let's talk about the economy as well, because, you know, we continue to hear, well, hey, unemployment's at 4.9 percent. Things have improved drastically since President Obama took office. Uh, others say dig into those numbers, the labor participation rate at an all-time low. Uh, and they say that there are all kinds of fundamental underpinnings of the economy that are in trouble. Uh, how can you link that? Should Trump try to link that to her? I mean, we know what her policy positions are on some of these economic issues. Uh, would that be helpful? 
I think it's a little hard to, to make her responsible for the current condition, but it is not hard at all, and I think it ought to be the essence of the campaign to say that she represents classic liberalism. In fact, she's probably to the left of Obama because she had to run to the left to catch up with Bernie Sanders in the primaries, and we know where the policies have led. You know, we have now gone eight years, this is the longest, the only time in American history we've gone through a presidential term without a single year of growth at 3%. This is unprecedented. And I think what you do is you say she represents the, uh, the democratic idea, the democratic establishment, and the traditional old, completely obsolete and anachronistic democratic economic plans that go back to the New Deal. It worked in the mid-20th century. It, it doesn't work now. And do you want to elect that? So I don't think you do this by making the economic argument in terms of blame. What you do is in, in terms of the future, not the past. Uh, the, uh, this is what the past has brought you, and that's the future she promises you. All right. Well, we'll see if the Trump campaign is listening to the Kelly file tonight and I'm taking not sure they <laughs> listen to me. <laughs> Dr. Krauthammer's advice. They may we listen to you. You never know. They, we'll see. We'll let you know you, if we hear know. from him. You let us know if you hear from okay. him too. Charles, great to yeah, see you tonight. Well, I'm sure I will. Take care. <laughs> Thank you.